Praise God, verse 5 God. Praise God, verse 5 God. I give God a hand of praise. We thank God for being here on the day. Amen. To be able to worship His name, the Spirit, and the truth. April 24, 2022. One Sunday post Resurrection Sunday. I'm glad that you're here on today. Amen. We're here to worship the Lord and Spirit and truth. You made it here. Choir made it here. Pastor made it here. We're here. Amen. And we need to just praise God and rule all blessings flow. So even before we get started, I want to give you some space just to give God some praise. Just praise God for all who blessings flow. If you need to just raise your hand, clap your hand. If you need to say hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. If you need to go through the process of just giving God praise, the utmost praise, saying Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Just praise God where you are just to have the space because we may not to go in and worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. We thank God on today for what we are about to experience on yet another Sunday of worship. I ask that you pray with me at this time as we move into this place of communal worship with God and with each other. I ask right now that you bow your heads with me. And I want you to get your mind centered on Christ, centered on His goodness, His mercy, centered on what He's done for you, even over the last hour, how good God has been to you and to me. Let us pray. Father God, thank you. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And Lord, lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. Thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory. Well, and up. Precious God, we thank you, Lord, for this time of worship, of being able to be in this space, God, because, Lord, you allow us to get here. Lord, this is your holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before you. Because we honor your name and praise your name. Glorify you, Lord. You are the matchless king. And we thank you, Father, for where we are even now. So as we enter this worship experience on today, we ask, Lord, that turn the volume on our own agendas. Lord, that you lead us, Lord, into your presence, oh God, where, Lord, we all feel that we're together, but at the same time, as if we are in front of you like Moses was in front of that burning bush. Then, Lord, the place where we stand right now is holy ground. Not because we said so, but because this is your house. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to be in your presence. Glorify and magnify your name. Someone here, Lord, made a huge stretch just to be here. Somebody, Lord, was hurt all over their body. However, Lord, you gave them just enough strength to be able to get up and get themselves right here to church, God, because it was only you. And I don't know all the reasons that's why, Lord. But Lord, we're all together, Lord, because there's an expectancy that all of us have. Somebody came to pray for somebody else. Somebody came to pray for a family member. Somebody came here, Lord, because they are seeking a word from you today. God, whatever the concerns are, we lay all these things at the altar. Right here in worship. Lord, you will rectify situations that you will move things 
out of the way that needs to be moved. Lord, that you'll move things in that need to be moved in. All that occurs, Lord, in this context of worship. So we ask right now in the name of Jesus. Bless our praise team, bless our sisters, bless our congregation, the ushers to stand on the floor, those who are working sight and sound, everyone under the sound of my voice, so that, Lord, we will have an experience, and holy encounter with you. Bless us now, Jesus, and give us what we need, Lord, all today, and in this moment, for all, that's all that we have, Lord, that's all you've given us, and we're going to take full advantage uh, thank you, Father, for all you continue to do. Bless us now, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give God a hand out of praise. Amen. As we go to worship on today, I'm going to step away from our praise team so can lead us in worship on today. Amen. Yeah, amen. 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 This has been a real week. Hey, devil has really, really tried this week. There's been a lot that's been going on. You know, me and Deacon Floyd, my husband was sitting down talking last night. We were talking about the spiritual warfare and how the devil tries to use the areas in our lives that we're weak in to do the things and to discourage us. cousin this week hit by a truck. We don't understand why she was out at 4 feet in the morning. My son Joy bought a good friend. He was going over to the other friend's house, got out the car, and somebody sprayed and shot. The other friend tried to take him to the hospital. He died in his car. Then we got our choir leader, Sister Prudence, was going through some stuff. Her, her daughter is going through some stuff. Then I found out when I saw Jordan this morning that another one of his friends house burned last night. He happened to be in it and he heard a big boom and he was able to get everybody out of the house. You know, we are in the times. God is trying to tell us to lean on each other and be there to fight for each other. The devil is not happy that we're coming out of the COVID and we're all getting back together, getting back into the church. But we need each other whether you think we do or not. And we have to be that accessory for everybody. Because you know, we, you know, the Lord does some things and puts us in situations so that we will come back to like we're supposed to depend on God depend on God for everything that we do not man but God because he is the only one that can get us through these times he is the only one
your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And equally as important that you love your neighbor as yourself. It's good to know that we serve a true and living God. Amen. We thank God for being in service yet one more time. Amen. To walk upon his word. Know the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Be able to worship in spirit and in truth. I ask that those who can stand, please stand for the reading of God's word on this morning. Amen. We'll be coming from the book of Acts, chapter number one. The book of Acts, chapter number one. And I want to read verses one through eight on today. The Gospel of Acts, chapter one. Verses 1 through 8. And I'm reading from the New International Version of God's Word. This is what it says. It says, In my former book, Theophilus, I write about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, and after his suffering, presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days. He spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak of speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the time to dates the Father has set by his own authority. Verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to all the ends of the earth. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word and may it sanctify us through the deepest roots of our heart. Amen. At this time, we want to sing our congregational hymn. Hymn number 137. There is power in the blood.
Saturday, April 30th at 10 a.m. Sunday school classes for all ages are open at 8.45 a.m. Hymn vocal choir rehearsal will be Saturday, April 30th at 3 p.m. And Women's Day will be Sunday, May 1st, during the morning worship. Deaconess Melissa Henson Adam will be the speaker for the service. All members are asked to donate $10 over and above, over and above your time and support of the Women's Day. Hymn and Vocal Choir will celebrate their annual Sunday, celebrate their anniversary Sunday, 20, May the 22nd, during Monday worship. Pastor's anniversary celebration will be Sunday, May 22nd at 3 p.m. The speaker will be Reverend Barrow and Pastor Rita Memorial Baptist. He will be accompanied by Rita Memorial Hymn Choir and members. High school graduates, high school and college graduates will be recognized Sunday, May 29th during the morning worship asking all high school and college graduates to turn the information to the church secretary by April 30th. We would like to add you to the web page. All children church teachers, please meet uh, with Sister Alex Young Johnson today for the service. Children church will start May 1st. Teachers are Mr. Jenny Fletcher, Ashley Morales, Erica Valentine, Marcus Berry, Andrew, and Alexandria Johnson. Thank you. Reminder to turn in your form by April 30th to update your information for the membership roster. Additional Sunday school teachers are needed for the youth. Please see Judy Ware or Deacon Kellen Floyd if you're interested. VBS, which is uh, Vocational Bible Study, is June 13th through the 17th. We need teachers for the youth class. Please see Sister April Berry if you are interested. There will be a community food truck event July 16th, 2022, here at the church. If you are interested, <coughs> excuse me, if you are interested uh, or know someone that would like to bring their food truck, please see the church secretary or April Berry for application for more details. The fee for the truck is 75. For I would like to leave you with he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. We thank God for today. We oh, yeah. ask for uh, what we have seen and heard. Thank you, uh, Brother Marcus, amen, for the announcements on today. Advisement, all the announcements, amen. Uh, members of First Time Zion and the ladies are going home here at your church, amen. What I've noticed, amen, is um, since we've been back, things are slowly coming together, slowly, amen. That's not a bad thing, uh, given the pandemic and uh, what we've been going through, but what I'm finding is that we are starting to, to start to slowly get things uh, back together regards to various things that we're doing. Um, during the pandemic, amen, it was said to me, amen, on a couple occasions, amen, that some people were like, the church is dead, amen. Church ain't dead. Amen. Church ain't been dead, amen. amen. Church is alive, amen. It's alive, amen, amen. Give me a hand, I'm a praise for that, because again, amen, what I, what I realized and learned, I was actually in my hometown yesterday, uh, again, my, my, my uh, stepfather, 85th birthday. Amen. 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 And we were celebrating yesterday, and my home pastor was there. I had talked to him in quite some time. And one of the things that he talked to me about was he said, Church, he said, Sean, church now, he said, you all are going to have a challenge. But please know, know, God will give you what you need yeah. in the season. You're and, and and he is about to celebrate 40 years of pastor in my in my home church, Sunday Home Baptist Church. But he was giving me those words, I believe, because it's something that he already kind of sees, even in ministry now. And he's starting to come to that scene at that time where he's starting to now 
to get the pull back. Amen. And he's looking at us and saying, there's a lot of challenges and church is not going to be the same as it once was. Amen. But just know that God is still faithful and God is still able. Amen. So this is why we continue to do what we're doing because if I'm not mistaken, my Bible says that if we have the faith of the grain of mustard seed, yeah. that we can tell the mountain to move. So you didn't get that. Not that we move the mountain. We tell the mountain to move. And then the mountain must move because the power of God said so. And this is why we continue to do what we do. So don't get discouraged. Don't, don't, don't fret. Don't uh, get apprehensive in regards to the things that are going on. Just know that God is able. And if you know that, that's enough. That's enough. That's not because God is truly able and we're still going on in the name of the Lord. Amen. You heard the announcements that were mentioned. Please know that Sunday school is back. We are back. We are back. We are back. Amen. We are back. And so we were here in Sunday school. All the adult classes, the adult classes are going to be here until we figure out a segmentation if we need one. But we do have our youth teachers who are here this morning. Amen. And so 845, we're here. Amen. Uh, the Sunday school that is broadcast will be from the adult class. So we will continue to do that going forward. But we'll be right here in the sanctuary in the midst of doing that. Keep in mind all the other announcements. Please stand up, Deacon Melissa. Amen. She's our Wednesday speaker for next week. Amen. Amen. And I am I am I am I am just thrilled to hear what God has is going to say through her for our Women's Day. And of course, the pastor, I will be here. I'll be here next week. Amen. And we will go through our communion Sunday. So I will be communion on next Sunday. But um, uh, Deacon Melissa is going to bring us a word. And we're just going to have a good time in the name of the Lord. Amen. And celebrating Women's Day. Amen. On next week. So please keep that in mind. Um, also, amen. Um, uh, some other things on the announcements with regards to the Hymn and Vocal Choir celebrating their anniversary on May 22nd. Amen. And thank God for, for them. Amen. And celebrate with them. Amen. We probably will have a morning speaker. Amen. On that day because that is the pastor's anniversary. Amen. And uh, Reverend Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Thomas Pharaoh, will be coming from Reader Memorial on next week and will go um, and, and preach for us on that afternoon. Amen. Uh, developed a good friendship with him since he's been in Charlotte. Amen. And just want to make sure we brought him here in order to expound the word of God. Uh, his church family at Reader Memorial, they're going to come and celebrate with us on that day. Also, uh, amen, a little shameless plug I'm going to give, amen, because I told him I would do it, amen, but, uh, online and so forth. If you love Jamaican food, yeah, somebody said, Lord, have mercy. I think I heard somebody, heard somebody say, Lord Jesus, say amen. And I'm with you, sister. Brother, sister, whoever said that. There is a spot, amen, on, in the Steel Creek area. Amen. And a lot of you may already know it, but it's called the Jerk Joint. Amen. It's called the Jerk Joint Jamaican Restaurant. I told them I would give them a shameless plug. Amen. Uh, awesome food, awesome people. Amen. And the family who owns it, they are... Uh, they are members, I think, at Faith Memorial, uh, Faith Memorial Baptist, amen, a church here in Charlotte. But the food is awesome and great, uh, and uh, I told them I would give them a plug in regards to that. I, I knew they were there, but I had never been there. My cousin came to Charlotte, and we went there and ate. I was like, Lord, how precious this food is good, amen. And I think I had some, uh, some uh, curry, uh, curry shrimp or something, and rice. And, uh, and I'm going to tell you, the mac and cheese, It'll make you reach generations to snack somebody. Amen. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but again, the opportunity, amen. I mean, it may not be open on Sundays, but again, I'm going to give them a shameless plug, amen, with regards to their restaurant in the Steel Creek area. You've been fond of there in that Steel Creek area near the outlets, amen, uh, with regards to that. Also, um, again, remember our events with regards to our um, community food truck event as well. Again, Sunday school teachers that are needed, amen, here at First Mount Zion. Please keep those things in mind as we continue to slowly enhance and get things back uh, on, on a working plane here at the church. 
Amen. So just keep those things in mind with regards to our announcements as we continue again to move forward. Uh, talk to Sister Ware or to Deacon Kenny Floyd, and they will lead you lessons with regards to teaching high school and college graduates. Amen. We want to celebrate you on the 29th. Amen. Uh, your accomplishments and achievements. Please get all the information in to the said individuals in the program. Amen. So that we can come together and celebrate with you. We have some awesome young folk here at this church that are doing some masterful things. Amen. Amen. And we want to celebrate them. Amen. And if you are an older child, amen, and you are graduating, amen, from some program, amen, that you're going through and so on, let us know. Put your name on that list. We want to celebrate with you as well. Amen. We want to make sure we encourage one another in the love of Christ and all the things that Christ is doing through us, through us in this place that we call First Mount Zion. Amen. 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 We thank God for what he's going to do in the midst of that. And also, Vacation Power School, June 13th through June 17th. See Sister April Berry for details. We're getting all that stuff together. Amen. In regards to that, again, it's good to be able to slowly come back into church. Amen. And to be able to have worship and service and a lot of things that we are familiar with. Amen. Amen. So please, ma'am, please, sir, be cognizant in regards to to that. Amen. I want you also to keep in prayer. No, we're not interested in shutting it, but please keep in prayer. Amen. Sister Prudence Wilson and her family. Amen. They are just dealing with a situation right now and it's just very, very, uh, very, very troublesome. Amen. But just be in prayer for them uh, in this time right now that they're dealing with. Amen. Right now. Amen. You've heard others. Uh, amen. The uh, brother, brother Tidwell, amen. he's here in service. Amen. Be in prayer for their family. Amen. The loss of his niece. Amen. Please be in prayer for, for them. Amen. The this is where they are. And again, even uh, uh, Brother Jordan Floyd, uh, his his friend. Amen. There's a lot of stuff going on. And at the end of the service today, amen, I've heard so much that folks are going through. I, I want to make sure that in the service we have a communal prayer. Amen. Uh, you don't have to come up, amen, because of no COVID. So we'll make sure folks are safe. But I'm going to come down to the floor, and we're just going to have prayer. Amen. We're going to pray to God because there's so much going on. When you couple COVID with that, it just seems as though folks are still dealing with things, dealing with bereavement. And then you got all these other things that are happening around our city, amen, that are just not of God. We need to pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have our morning prayer and we're going to have a prayer right before we dismiss on today. Amen. Because we're just going to continue to pray that God will rectify situations, uplift, deliver, and do what God does when we break or raise in the aspect of conflict, when things happen and when things occur. So with that said, I want to step out of the way, amen, to give space for our, for our deacons to come, for our uh, sick and shut in, and sick and shut in, and then also for our prayer. Amen. On today. So Deacon Willis Square is going to come at this time and lead us, uh, give us an emphasis on our city shut in. And then Deacon Kenny Ford is going to come and lead us to the thrones of grace. Amen.
So I want to say good morning, and y'all have a beautiful and wonderful day. <laughs> Again, you have some things as well, amen, that have either troubled you this week that you're asking God for. Maybe it's just, just that you just need to seek God in the midst of prayer. If you can, those things come to mind when you begin the process of thinking about praying. Amen. Bring your petitions to God. Bring them to God. And God will answer your prayers. Whatever it may be, just remember that God is hearing. And God is listening. One of the things that we also have to do is the word of God tells us we pray without ceasing because that means that we pray. God can, can, can listen and hear all of our prayers from millions of people, amen, at one time. And that's the beauty of the God that we serve. So as we pray, amen, be personal with God. Ask them get under uh, the shadow of your voice or, or the prayer of Deacon Floyd, the things that you have petitions for, the things you're asking God for. God hears you because He's your, because truly you are His child. Amen. And truly He is your Father. And so in that, let's keep the words of prayer close to our hearts so that God will continue to hear and we have a communal relationship with God. Deacon Floyd. Good morning, church. Give an honor to God, our Most High, Jesus Christ, our Messiah, and the Holy Spirit. We have not because we ask not. In God's word, it says, ask that you may receive. This morning, we see deliverance, deliverance from all evilness, deliverance from sickness, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, anything that would keep us in bondage. We ask, Lord, for your deliverance. Yes. And Lord, we ask, Lord, for deliverance of personal issues we may have, evil desires that we may have, yes. fornication, adultery, infidelity, masturbation, Lord. Deliver us from those things. Yes. Yes. Deliver us from lack, Lord. Some may not have what others may have. Deliver us, deliver us from bondage. Some of us may not realize that we are in bondage. But we are. Lord, we just give you the highest praise and honor and we glorify your name. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
We thank God on today, amen, for being able to bring our petitions and concerns to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. At this time, amen, we ask that those who can stand, please stand. Amen. As we worship the Lord, we are giving unto the Lord in the midst of tithes and offerings. For those that are online, amen, uh, and maybe some that are here, amen, you may give electronically by way of our PayPal app, and you can find that on our website at www.firstmountzion, that's F-I-R-S-T, N-T-Z-I-O-N.com. You can find us there. Uh, there's a donate button on the home page. Just click it. and It'll lead you to the PayPal app. You can give by way of your debit card that way. Or you can load the Givelify app on your phone. Amen. On your uh, cell phone. Amen. Hit that app. Find our logo. Amen. Which you see on our um, social media page. Amen. Those are program. That's our logo there. Find that there on Givelify. Once you see that, you know that's us, First Mount Zion. You can give by way of your debit card through the Givelify app. Please remember that we have our Dropbox, which is open all the time. If it's a secure Dropbox, amen, it is locked. You can actually give if you're in the area, amen, here on West of Remount Road. You may come by the campus, just drop your tithes and offerings off in the envelope, put your name on it, we'll make sure you get it and appropriate it thusly. And if you need someone to come, Amen. By your home, if you're in the Charlotte Metro area, to come and pick up your tithes and offerings, please contact us, 704 332 8335, here at First Mount Zion. If no one answers, just leave a message. We'll get back with you and organize a time to come and pick up your tithes and offerings. Amen. It's a pleasure and a joy to give unto the Lord. Amen. And it is a form that is tied to our worship. Amen. At this time, let's have a word of prayer. And as we pray over our offering, please, First Mount Zion members, remember our 777 campaign. Amen. As we continue it, we'll just ask you each Sunday, give $7 above beyond your tithes and offerings when you write out your tithes and offerings every week. Amen. Let us pray at this time. Most eternal and all wise God and Heavenly Father, thank you for what you are doing in this place called First Mount Zion. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts that will be given that we use for the upbuilding of your kingdom, and the tearing down of whatever Satan is attempting to scheme up, because that's what he's best at doing, Lord. But Lord, you made it clear, Lord, that you did not come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Satan does that. But you came to give us life, and life more abundantly. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you bless those who give. Bless those who have a heart to give, but may not have it at this time. Allow, Lord, provision where there's lack, Whatever someone is praying for right now, God, that you deliver that to them, O oh Lord, and you make those promises to them, O oh Lord, in order that they will receive what they're asking for. We thank you, Father, for all that you continue to do. Bless us, keep us, give us what we need on the journey, and we'll be careful to give your name praise, honor, and glory, because it's due. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God, and our trustees will serve you at this time. Thank you. 
just to come. That his love covers a multitude of sins. To know that he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just to know that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Just to know. between us and death. However, God, through Jesus Christ, lifted us up. His love resurrected us. His love gave us not only knowledge, but more importantly, a place to call home. That's truly love. When we really understand that, I think we have a greater appreciation for the God we serve. Church becomes different. It doesn't become mundane. It doesn't become rudimentary. It doesn't become something that's part of the cycle that we go through daily. It becomes something foundational. It becomes something rooted within our spirit that moves us past religion into relationship with God. And when we understand that more and more, the power of God that resurrected Christ from the dead is what's still lifting dead folks up today. Dead in spirit because of activities of their lives. Dead because, amen, they feel that there's no hope left for the future dead because they feel that all hope is gone and that they can't get out of the situation that they're in and allowing the situations to overtake them, amen, rather than the power of God to lift them out of a dead state. It's the love of God that does that. Never forget, I don't know where you are spiritually right now, but do not allow someone or something to steal the thought and realization of the love that God has for you away from you. But truly, His love is what keeps us going. And it is His love that will ultimately take us home. Amen. Scripture that was read in your hearing on today. Amen. The book of Acts. We've read through the first part, but I do want to go through the second part of it on today. Verses 9 through 11. And ask for those who can stand. Please stand for the reading of God's word. Verses 9 through 11. says, after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his holy word. May it truly sanctify us to the deepest roots of our heart. You may be seated in the presence of God on today. Let us pray. The Lord, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord shall stand forever. 
We pray, Lord, in faith, this word as it goes in faith. Thank you, Father, for what it is. It's your word. Use me only as the weak vessel that I am. Give me enough strength for right now to, Lord, expose it, preach this word, so it goes forth to the masses, reaches the hearts of God, not only the ears, and allows us transfiguration, Lord, transformifies our very internal being to become better for you, and Lord, to continue to lay down the old self in exchange for the newness you wish to give us. Bless us now as we go in faith and this word. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The title is ours of this morning. I want you to look at your neighbor. Amen. I was inspired, amen, by the words God had given me a few years ago. Amen. And I pulled this word back up once again. Amen. And I wanted to go through and preach it with somewhat of a different spin. Amen. On today. Amen. So I ask that you look at your neighbor and just tell them, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, neighbor. preachers going to talk about after the morning after. Amen. Amen. Turn to your other neighbor. Amen. And just tell them, neighbor, oh neighbor, Preachers going to talk about after the morning after. Amen. Amen. Thank you for helping me introduce the subject of the sermon on this morning. Amen. After the morning after. After the morning after. Amen. Church, the story is told of a father who had five sons. <clears throat> the first son was an obedient child who loved his father. The four remaining sons were distinctively rebellious to varying degrees. One of the instructions of the father was not to go near the river because it had such a dreadful current. It was very dangerous to say the least. But the four last four sons decided not to listen to their father. So they all went down by the river, played in the water only to be sucked up by its current and pulled downstream. <clears throat> no matter how hard they tried, they could not get out of the water. They were pulled downstream for miles and miles until many miles later and almost dead, they were washed ashore a long way from home. They had enough survival skills about them to build a fire. And around that fire, they longed for home. But they didn't know how to get home. They didn't have a way to get back home. They remembered their father with fondness. They remembered how joyful things were back home. And lamented over how things might have gone differently for them if only they would have obeyed. After a while, one son said, I'm going to build a hut. I'm going to make the best of things I can right here. I'm going to call this home. The second son went over to the ridge to watch the first son build his hut. And he said, I'm going to stay here and watch what you do. Because I'm going to tell on you when we get back home. I'm going to tell Daddy that you forgot about him. And I'm going to tell him that you forgot your real home. The third son said, well, I'm going back home. I don't know my way, but I'll just follow the bank and go back the way we came from. 
Now the obedient son had been sent by his father to look for his brothers. He ran into the fourth son first. He told him that their father had sent him to find his brothers and bring them home. Now that he located one of his brothers, he wanted to know where the other three were. Brother number four showed him where brother number one had built his hut. They knocked on the door. The obedient brother said, time to go home. But the brother number one said, this is home now. I've been away from daddy's house too long. I've got new friends now and a new way of life. Thanks a lot, but I'm okay where I am. They went to the second brother who was sitting down evaluating the first brother. The obedient brother said, let's go home. Brother number two said, I can't leave here. I'm going to keep my eye on brother number one. If I leave, then there will be nobody to watch what he is doing. There will be no one to critique or judge him. They went to the third son, who was busy making his way upstream. The obedient brother said, you don't have to struggle to find your way home. i got a boat with a motor to take us upstream. Brother number three said, no, I've got to do it to do this myself because then I can get home to daddy and show him how much I love him by how hard I work to get back to him. Then the father sent the son to bring everybody back home. But only one brother went home. Only one brother was willing to go home God's way. The first brother had gotten so comfortable where he lived that he was not willing to leave what he knew for the uncertainties of the trip back home. The second brother was so focused on somebody else that he forgot it was his sin that got him in the water in the first place. He didn't have to spend all of his time looking at his brother's sin. If he just looked at himself, he could go home. The third brother was a do-it-yourself. He felt if he tried hard enough, he could be free and climb home himself. Only the fourth brother understood that the only way to get out of the mess he had gotten himself into was to follow the son who knew how to take him back to the father so he would be whole again. And church, this is what happens after the morning after. There are some crucial and critical decisions that need to be made, made the morning after. And yeah, I know you have Frank and Beverly and Mays on your mind with the title of the sermon. But the title is only to bring us closer to the conclusions we will have to make and the ultimate decisions we plan to walk into. Church in the morning after. We must decide whether or not what we experienced last Sunday is worth carrying forward for the remainder of our lives. In the morning after, we must decide whether we bury the despicable me or whether we continue to be angry by the decision of carrying our own dead spiritual weight. In the morning after, we have come to the grips, grips with whether or not our relationships and associations with some people are either advantageous or destructive to our own spiritual health. In the morning hour, we have to decide whether the resurrection of Jesus is transformative in bringing about a real and reflective change in our lives or whether it's just a fluke, a fantasy, or a flamboyant fairy tale. In the morning after, 
We must decide whether we are prepared to be honest with ourselves that we ain't perfect. Yes, I said ain't. We ain't perfect. That we have some jacked up things in our lives. That we need God to fix or to continue uh, living the life of our own perfection and acting as if we don't have complications and issues that need spiritual resurrection. In the morning after, we must bring to a head whether or not we are going to stop playing church and actually be the church. Whether or not Sunday morning is a spiritual costume party or a real life transformational experience with Jesus. And whether or not we continue to abase ourselves in distractions that really don't matter or focus our attention to spiritual matters that will destroy spiritual distractions. So I'm here to tell you all today that if Jesus had the Roman government and the Sanhedrin shook, Jesus had the world, whole world afraid of him accurately performing that which the prophets of old had testified. If Jesus had the Pharisees on the edge because of the truth which he was speaking, Jesus has much of the world shaken up to the truth of his being, of his character, and of his divinity. Then if you are a believer in him, then expect to have some people shook. For the time we have this morning, I want to deal with this question as the Spirit of God would allow. What should we bring or what should we be doing in the morning after? What should we be doing in the morning after? Church, my first point on this question of what should we be doing the morning after is that we don't leave what we have been taught. We must wait for the Holy Spirit. Don't leave what you have been taught. Wait. Wait on the Holy Spirit. As we go through our text on this morning, verses 4 through 5, what we see here, it says that on one occasion while he was eating with them, meaning Jesus, he gave them the command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father, of my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And all you need to know, really, in this point, First Mount Zion, is three things. God had prophesied. God had promised it. So all we have to do is wait for it. Let me, let me, let me bring that back again. God had prophesied. God had promised it. All we have to do is wait for it. Now this is the problem, first about time, in today's contemporary culture. Nobody wants to wait for anything. Everybody wants instant quick grits now. Everybody wants their money now. Everybody wants their chippers. I want my chips with dip now. No one is willing to wait. To be patient and wait on the deliverance of God to give us anything. Even in the church. We rush to decisions sometimes too quickly. And we don't wait patiently enough to wait to see what God would have us to do. And oftentimes, church, that's how we end up in trouble. Because we're not willing to wait, and because we end up stepping out on unprotected soil, we end up catching arrows and bullets that we did not expect. When all you had to do was sit back and wait, and God said it, you can assure it, God said it, God prophesied it, God promised it, just wait. And watch God 
work through your waiting. My Bible says in the Old Testament, those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And church, this is something that we have to worry about in the morning after. When God has already said, just stay still for a minute. What we need to do is just listen to God's voice as to what pattern of direction we need to move into while we're waiting. While we're waiting, God is establishing the groundwork. While we're waiting, God is showing us the blueprint. While we're waiting, Brother Collins, God is drafting the NFL play to hand the football off that guarantees us a 75-yard sprint to the end zone. And church, this is where we as Christians in this contemporary culture have got it wrong. We want things down. We need things now. Now. Rather than wait. And I will tell you first about Zion. There's some assurances in waiting that are in this passage. He tells them, don't you go nowhere. Don't leave Jerusalem. See church, this is where I, I like to get preaching. Because think about if they would have left. First of all, he tells them to stay for a reason. The reason is, is that the place where they are is where the catastrophe of their lives had just happened. And what God wants them to do is to realize, don't get hung up on Jesus being dead and died on a cross and being raised from the dead because of the events that happened, stay right where you are because God is going to resurrect something within your life because he's going to show and bring death up to life out of a situation that they thought was dead. And so with that, they had to stay where they were. Also, watch this. Look where they are. They're in Jerusalem. This is the place that's called the city of peace. And I want to tell someone on the day, before you make the next move without getting the consideration of God, I want to let you know something. You might be leaving leaving peace behind in a place where you think all hell is breaking loose. So you need to stay where you are because maybe God is using you to bring some peace into a situation that, that you're going through even now. Why leave when God is telling you to stay? And I know it doesn't make sense. I know that it doesn't make sense at all. But the things of God don't make sense. Because His ways are not our ways. And His thoughts are not our thoughts. Before you begin the process of moving away, stand still, God promised, God prophesied, just wait. And watch God move in that very situation. And I don't know how God is going to move, but the key to this point is that we need to be listening to God's voice in the midst of wherever we are. Church, let me go a little further. Second point. What should we be doing the morning after? Church, we should not speculate our will for God's will. We should not speculate our will for God's will. In our text, church, when we get to verse 5, he says, John baptized with water, meaning John the Baptist, but I will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So what he's saying is, I need for you to wait because there's a gift 
They don't want to give you, but you can only receive it where you are. I want to give you a gift. I'm telling you what the gift is. But you can't receive it until you sit where you are. And this church is something that we have to really understand. Is that he says in a few days, I'm going to bless you with the Holy Spirit. So this is something they haven't experienced yet. Remember this. Something that is new to them that they don't know. But God says, wait in Jerusalem and it's coming. And I want you to think about this. How often have we waited on God? And then God shows up with something we didn't expect and blows our minds. How many times has that happened in our own lives? So maybe the point of waiting is that God is setting the structure up in order to give us something that we never had before that makes us better than we were yesterday in order to be ready and available for tomorrow. And that church is why the waiting takes place. I always wondered my grandma when those storms came. Baby, all y'all y'all didn't sit down. Shut up. Don't say nothing. And the thunderstorm is going by. Lightning and flashing and everything. Thunder rolling. But everybody in the house is quiet. Because maybe grandma understood that we need to just let God do his work. Y'all, 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 y'all. Maybe God needs to do his work. Maybe God needs to bring the storm in to blow, blow, blow some of the hell raises away. Sometimes God has to bring the storm in in order to fertilize the ground so that stuff will be able to grow. Maybe God brings the storm in in order to push some things out that have been stagnant too long to bring some freshness into the day because if the storm didn't come, then all that would be and we need to take reverence to what God and who God is and so we need to be quiet
so that spiritually we can meet the expectation spiritually of what God is about to do in the midst of the place where we sit right now. Maybe God has us here sitting in order to get attitudes straight, in order to get our minds made up, in order to get all the things internally that need to be fixed right. Because once all that's fixed, that's when God comes up and says, baby, y'all are ready to do the work I have called y'all to do. And it's with this church that God can't work in a situation where the folks he's trying to work with aren't spiritually prepared for. In order to reach the expectation, God has to prime the ground. He's got to water it. He's got to get it ready. Because once it's time, the expectation is coming. But also the people can't be down here for something that God is about to do up here. Don't look for this blessing just yet. Look for the blessing when you realize you've been blessed. Oh, it's quiet. Because, church, God will let people raise a level of an expectation. And all of a sudden, when we're spiritually ready, God will have the ground pride for us to do magnificent things that he has called us to do based off his will and not our own. Mm. Yeah, I know this word bonds me, but that's okay. My last point, church. What should we be doing the morning after? Church, we need to be moving within God's calling and stop looking up. Let me show you. Church, when we end this passage, when we get to those last verses, they saw Jesus taken up before their very eyes. In the church, church, the disciples are distraught at this point. Jesus had been with them 40 days after he was raised from the dead. Church, what we see here is that he was taken up before their eyes. And a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently, and all of a sudden, two men showed up. They were angels. They get the process of saying, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here <laughs> looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go up. And church, as I close the sermon on this morning, I have one question for you. What are you going to do after the morning after? For God the Father has sent the Son to locate you. If you are tired of living in a hut. Let God get you home the morning after. If you are tired of being focused on everybody else and have not taken the time to focus on your sin and your shortcomings, let Jesus bring you home the morning after. If you are tired of trying to work uh, work your, your own way back to the place from the place you're in. Uh, let the Holy Spirit uh, bring you home in the morning after. Uh, church uh, is good to look up, uh, but it's better to look out uh, because God has called you to a greater work and assignment. Uh, don't worry uh, about what other folks might be doing. Uh, don't worry uh, about what other folks may say. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, God, uh, while 
God is measuring you up. Getting you right for the work that needs to be done. While you're waiting, God is filling your cup. So you're ready for the next dimension of what first outside is about to do. While you're waiting, God is lifting you up. Showing that you don't need to be discouraged. You don't need to be faint at heart. God is moving. God is lifting. God is loving. God is giving you everything you need. The morning after. After resurrection to the church. After the morning after. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready for what God is about to do. God is moving us. God is shifting us. God is shaking us. And as long as we fall in His will, the morning after is nothing but sunshine. The morning after is nothing but lilacs and roses. The morning after is nothing but chirping birds and lilies in the valley. This is why, church, we're here. This is why we're stretched. This is why. Because when the morning after comes and the sun, the S-O-N, shines on you, you will know without a shadow of a doubt that you can stand at attention and say, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm filled with what everything God has for me. I'm filled with what God has in my countenance. I'm filled. I'm filled. And my cup running over. Thank you for this morning. I'm not preaching. I'm not preaching. After the morning after, truly, church, there is a connection with what they had experienced to the glory of God that would be revealed. This is the reality, church. When we be quiet, shut up for a second, it might look bad what has happened. But you can trust if God has directed it and placed his hands on it, you can rest assured it is part of his will and all we have to do is wait and heed his instruction. Why is this important, church? Everybody talks about growth. Everybody talks about, well, listen, how can we get this much more? I tell you how. It's not by the numbers physically. It's by where you are spiritually to be able to handle the growth that's coming. Church, everyone wants to look at the numbers and the counts. At the end of the day, we have to look at our spirit. And where is our spirit in relationship with regards to where we believe God is going to take us? If it's not matched up, we have some work to do. And that's not a bad thing. What that says is, is that we're willing to improve in God that much more to receive and be accountable and responsible for what God is going to give us. Amen. With that, it's very difficult to give your pearls to swine. Well, I don't want to be a pig because I'm a prince. I'm a prince because I serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I hope you think you're a prince or a princess to God and to Christ because we are royalty. We don't live in a pig style. But you know, we have some ways that could be pig style ish. And we need to go through the process of allowing God to work through us. But before we do that, we must have simple obedience just to wait. Of the Lord and let God deal with us 
and shape us for the expectancy of what he's going to do. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered the thought of man the things that God will do. What God will accomplish. Let's continue to work in the will of the Lord and watch God bless our socks off because we work in Him. That's all I have the morning after, after the morning after. If there be one who wants to know Jesus Christ, the free part that I said, you may come to the canon of baptism, Christian experience of our letter. Those online, email us at info, I N F O, at first dot sign, F I R S T M T C I O N dot com. We will tell you about the salvation of grace of Jesus Christ and what has happened in the stretch over the moment for you in being saved by Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If there's one this morning, you may come. Lord, but they relented. We pray right now for them. 
We pray for those Lord, who did commit a homicide last night or last week. That Lord, they took a life of Lord. And now they have to deal with the judicial system. We pray for them, even now. We put all these petitions before you, Lord, because we know you are God that changes things through prayer. God, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for what we understand and know in you. Lord, we ask right now in the name of Jesus, whatever the congregation is praying for right now, someone needs a healing right now from illness, from disease, oh God. Somebody's hypertension and high blood pressure has gone completely crazy, God. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you rectify it right now, Lord, through the doctors, through medication and what have you. Somebody's dealing with cancer, God. We ask that you deal with it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, allow Lord, your healing touch to be on their body, oh God, and more importantly, on their spirit and their mind. We ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that we pray over families that are still dealing with bereavement, that are still dealing with individuals and people, God. They have lost from the side of joy. Give them hope. Give them a future, God. Give them, Lord, the cheer and the joy of the Lord that renews their strength, God. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now. For, Lord, the prayers of the righteous are built much, and we pray right now over every woman boy, girl, for our children that are coming off spring break, about to go back to school, God. For every bus driver that drives the bus of God, carrying our children to school and back home. We pray right now, Lord, for every senior citizen, oh God, who hasn't received the benefits that they should receive, that you will rectify the situation. Every veteran, oh God, that hasn't received the benefits that they should receive, that you're rectifying those situations right now in the name of Jesus. So God, you are a wonder-working God. You are a God that continues to do masterful work. We lay all these petitions, Lord, at the altar. So before we leave this place, have our minds clear, Lord. Have our spirits at peace, knowing that you have touched and rectified, corrected, reproved. The situation. You move some things in, Lord, and you also move some things out. Thank you, Father, for the words of prayer. Pray over every individual under the sound of our voice. Before they leave this place, that they will have a renewed vigor and renewed sense of self because of the power that comes by waiting on your will and waiting on your way. Bless us in every way. And give us what we need for this journey, Lord. We can't do it without you, Lord. We are yours. Everything we're not. Everything we are. And everything we're not. Everything we got, Lord. We're yours. We're yours, Lord. And we're dependent, solely dependent on you. Bless us and keep us. And give us what we need on the journey of life. Now, may the grace of God, in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. And the people of God say. Thank God bless you. I'm smiling